This is John Polamy of the Actionable Intelligence Alert. Today is February 18th, 2018. Today I wanted to talk about the uranium market and the expectations and the need for patience. Last week, Cameco, which is one of the largest uranium producers, probably the second largest uranium producer based in Canada, second to Kaz Atomprom, which is the Kazakhstan national uranium production company, came out with their four quarter earnings report and also commentary on the uranium market and how Cameco is adapting to this low price environment. Now in previous posts and communications or videos, I've talked about the uranium market the supply and dem demand dynamics that are present and how I feel that uh, uranium has some of the best asymmetry upside that I've ever seen based on these supply and demand fundamentals. Now, Cameco in their presentation talked about several things which I intend to review. The first being on the demand side. Currently, just to review, there's approximately 450 nuclear reactors operating around the world. Those reactors produce about 10 or 11 percent of the world's electricity. In the United States, for example, nuclear power is 20 percent of the power grid. In France, it's 75 percent. Those are just some examples. The fact of the matter is, guys, Nuclear power is not going away, no matter what politicians say. There's just, it's too ingrained in base load power and the math, the, the amount of megawatts, the demand for power is so huge, the terawatts, the numbers are so large, you just are not going to be able to replace it with solar and wind and these other intermittent forms of power, at least not in the near future. And you can talk about batteries and storage. I'm not going to talk about that. That's all science fiction right now. That's all in the lab. It's simply not going to, you're not going to run first world economies on solar and wind. So nuclear power is a staple of the power grid. And if you will note from this particular slide I have up here, there are 57 reactors under, currently under construction. You will note that the majority that are under construction are in places like China, Russia, and India. These are places that have huge amounts of need for power as the economies grow, but they're also plagued with tremendous amount of air pollution. Now, that simply has to get dealt with. You cannot be in a city like Mumbai or Beijing and have the populace breathing in particulate matter that's equivalent to two or three packs of cigarettes a day. It simply is going to bring the regime to an end at some point. People will demand, it calls into question the legitimacy of the regime if they can't solve problems like that. So that is why you're seeing this type of reactor construction going on in those places. It's the cleanest, I've said this before, nuclear is the cleanest, safest, best form of power generation known to man. And serious countries, I don't necessarily include the United States and Western Europe in this, understand it. That's whether these countries that are industrializing know they have to have a mixed generation pool that includes nuclear. So that's the demand side. We know demand is increasing. It's going to continue to increase. Now, we've also talked about Cameco cutting production at MacArthur River, their very large mine in Canada in the Athabasca uh, region. And what they have said is they have to deliver 32 to 33 million pounds of uranium to satisfy contractual requirements. So what they're going to do is after they've closed this mine, they have still have a certain amount of production that is currently in place and they are going to draw down their own inventory uh, that they have. They have inventories of, of uranium. In addition, they're going to go into the open market, and buy uranium from this on the spot market. So not only have they cut back on supply 
from their own mine, which is one of the low cost mines in the world, and even they couldn't make money, to supply their contracts, to fulfill their contracts, they're gonna go into the open market and further take down that supply by buying on the spot market. I think it's very important. Um, I've heard other companies say they're gonna do the same thing. It makes absolutely no sense when the cost of producing uranium is 40 to $50 a pound all in to sell it at $22 and then think you're gonna make it up on volume. It simply is a recipe for going bankrupt. That's why in a recent article I said, the uranium industry is basically in liquidation. There are no new mines being built. There is no investment coming into the sector because who's gonna put money in to a sector that your, where your costs are 40 to $50 a pound and you can only sell the material you're mining for 20, $22 a pound. It doesn't make any sense. The price has to go up. This is the most interesting slide, I think, in the slide deck. This basically shows, this is a Cameco slide. It talks about the utility uncovered uranium requirements. Now, people don't understand this, but there's a fuel cycle for a reactor. When you typical reactor, let's say it's a thousand megawatt reactor, it requires approximately 500,000 pounds of uranium per year to, to operate. When you initially uh, commission the reactor, you need four times that amount. So you need approximately two, two million pounds of reactor of uranium when you bring a new reactor online. And subsequent to that, 500,000 pounds every year. Now, the cycle to get that uranium is it's not like you just, you know, call up a tanker truck for a diesel generator and a guy shows up tomorrow morning with fuel oil and puts it into the generator. That's not how it is. The, in case you didn't know, or just to remind you, when you mine the material at the mine, it has to go through processing. It gets turned into yellow cake. It then goes into uh, to a uh, gas diffuser at a uh, enrichment facility. That's a process. It's pelletized, then put into the fuel rods. There's a man that's a manufacturing process. Basically, from mine to reactor, it's about two years. It takes about two years for the material to be mined before it ends up into the reactor. So as you can see, the utilities, I think, have been playing chicken here. They don't want to enter into long-term um, contracts with the uranium producers because the price is so low. And I think, you know, they're hesitant to do that because they feel that they can just go into the spot market, buy the material. However, as we just sh said earlier, they're going to be competing against even their own fuel suppliers. They're going to be in the market buying the same material. And I think, you know, we can't give a lot of credit to the utility fuel buyers or other folks I mean, with the prices have been so low for so long that they're making the same mistake that a lot of investors make, which is normalcy bias. Hey, the price will stay, the price is $25 a pound. It's been $25 a pound. It'll stay down here at $25 a pound. And therefore, they're not entering into these long-term agreements like they used to that were five or 10 years long for their uranium requirements. And you can see from this chart, this is from Cameco, so they have the best information. They're the 800-pound gorilla in the industry. The further you go out the years, the less coverage that the utilities have for their fuel requirement. Now, it costs several billion dollars to build a nuclear reactor. The last thing that you want to do is run out of fuel. That asset is worth nothing unless it is, has fuel in it and it's operating. So I think we have a perfect storm here being created where the demand with increasing reactor builds is increasing. And these low prices are creating an environment where no new investment of uranium supply is, has been happening or will happen for some time. And the utilities have been sitting on their hands thinking that these low prices in the spot market are going to continue and that they'll just be able to buy cheap uranium ad infinitum. I don't think that's the case. And I think this is going to set up for a tremendous bull market in uranium. Uh, I was party to the last one that happened the last decade in the mid 2000s. And there were several stocks that I own that went up thousand, a couple thousand percent. You can make a tremendous amount of money in a uranium bull market. I use the term 
it can add three, a uranium bull market can add three zeros to your net worth. It's very easy to turn $10,000 into a million dollars. That sounds crazy, but it, it, it has happened before and it will happen again. The problem I'm finding from a lot of the correspondence I'm having with people or what I see uh, arguments being made on various forums or message boards or even places like Seeking Alpha is people are not patient. They've been saying, well, you guys have been saying we're gonna have a uranium bull market for the last three or four years. And that's true. Um, a lot of people have been saying, including myself, we've been wrong. But here's how I look at it, guys. I know that this is going to happen. It's not like they're decommissioning reactors and the industry shrinking. The industry is actually increasing, the demand's increasing. Yet the two biggest players in the market are cutting back production. I don't really know, I don't think anybody actually accurately knows what the supply overhang is. But if I have to wait a year, 18 months or two years to get rip your face off thousand or 2000% returns, I'm capable of doing that and I will do that. When I talk about adding three zeros to your net worth, this is life changing, this is a life changing event. If you, if you catch a, this type of bull market correctly, it can change your life. It can, you can pay your house off. You can have a retirement. You can not have to work your crappy job anymore if you play it right. It requires patience, though. And a lot of, that's the problem I see in these markets, especially uh, nowadays in this society where everything happens instantaneously. You know, if something doesn't, if a web page doesn't load fast enough, people don't get their dopamine release and they start freaking out. I mean, people can't even sit for four or five minutes in a Chick-fil-A drive through They start getting anxious. So the people that are going to make the tremendous amount of money in this are going to be the people that not only can recognize the opportunity, which to me seems obvious, we've talked about it enough, but the, also the people that have the patience that can sit and wait, or as Jesse Livermore, my hero said, it wasn't my being, it wasn't my being, my being right that caused me to get wealthy. It was my sitting tight. So if you are seeing, forecasting something like this is going to happen, which we believe it will, you have to have the weather with all, you have to have the patience, you have to have the fortitude to just sit and wait for it to happen. Now, let me give an example of another market that I was involved in where this happened. This is a 20 year gold price chart that goes back to 1999, 90, 1998. You can see it goes up to modern times here, 2018. And you can see from 1999 when the gold price was about 250, 300 until it topped out in approximately 2011 at around $1,900 an, an ounce. And you can see this period between 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, nothing basically happened. But then we saw the breakout of the gold price and it just continuously marched higher. But if you lost your fortitude, if you lost your weather thaw, if you didn't understand the market and you couldn't sit tight and be right, you had a good chance of missing all this gain. That's a tremendous return to go from just in holding the bullion from $250 an ounce to $1,900 an ounce over a decade or a little bit more than a decade. And let me tell you, there were several opportunities around along this bull market to play junior gold mining stocks that went up hundreds, if not thousands of percent. Obviously, you know, just buying the metal created a tremendous return. However, as you can see on the chart, 353% return. But there were several opportunities to buy various mining stocks that went up magnitudes of that. And that's the same thing that's going to happen in uranium. But do you have the patience? Do you understand the market? If you understand the supply demand dynamic, if you understand that you cannot mine a necessary material for 40 or $50 a pound and sell it for $20 a pound and stay in business, if you understand that that's true, can you wait for that supply overhang to, to get used up so that the price moves higher? Every day I, that the uranium price stays at 20, 22, $23 a pound and doesn't move higher, more reactors are coming online, 
more uranium is being used up and it's not being replaced. When we d eventually do have the subsequent and inevitable bull market in uranium, I think it's going to overshoot on the upside even than it did back in the mid 2000s. There's more reactors being built. There, were, there weren't even reactors being built during the last bull market, very few. Now we're seeing this huge build out that's gonna continue for decades. And no one is investing in new mine supply. And folks, we've talked about this before. You can't just flip a switch and bring a uranium mine online. It takes 10 years minimum to bring a uranium mine online. So I think it's gonna be a tremendous opportunity. I think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I think that if you catch it right and you play it correctly and you have the patience, it can literally change you and your family's life. That's it for this week. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week.